Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and it is Saturday which means it is time for another Inspired Saturdays collaboration here on my YouTube channel. Today I am teaming up with Sin of Stampin' Munchkins. I hope you'll stick around, see how she inspired me, and then find out how you can go and see how I inspired her. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I don't know about you, but I have really enjoyed my new Inspired Saturdays series. I love finding new crafty YouTubers to be inspired by, and I hope that you're enjoying maybe finding some new to you YouTubers as well. For this week's collaboration, I am teaming up with Sin of Stampin' Munchkins. Once you're done watching my video today, at the very top of my description box below is a link to Sin's video for today. I cannot wait to find out how I inspired her. The piece that I will be taking inspiration from today is one that she created in a recent video. Up on the screen now is a picture of it. This is a picture from her Instagram account. So if you're on Instagram, make sure to check her out there as well. I also have that link below. What drew my eye to this piece was the white embossing on the vellum, which was layered over a pretty bold background. So keep that in mind when you see my card today because that's where I'm taking my inspiration from. Now, if after watching today's video, you're a crafty YouTuber who is interested in joining me, I will link the video below with all of the instructions and how you can apply. I would love to have you join me. Right now, I have some openings starting in October through the end of the year. When I do start the process of my card, I will go to a voiceover. If I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. But for now, I'm going to tell you about some of the supplies I'm using and then we'll get into creating. For my pattern paper, I pulled out this Happy Hooray paper pad. It is by Pebbles Inc. And I pre-chose these three patterns. For my layout, I will be using the newest sheet load of cards, August 2020. And instead of making the six cards that this yields, I will be making one using the dimensions given here. If you're interested in downloading this file for free, I will have the debut video linked below. I also got out a white top fold card base, a piece of 28 pound vellum. For my sentiment, I'll be using the Happy Birthday to You from Miss Ink Stamps from the Unbirthday set. And the reason I originally bought this was it says a very merry unbirthday to you. So that's something you can send any day of the year, right? Except on their birthday? And I will be stamping in Versamark and embossing with my Detail White Embossing Powder. Let's get crafty! Before I get started, I do just want to correct something I just said. I just said that I will be making a single card, but that actually isn't the case. I will be making three cards because I have to cut these into the pieces for the card. I'm going to end up with enough pieces for three, so I may as well just get them all done while I'm cutting. Now that that is out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and cut all three of my pattern papers per the instruction on the sheet load of cards printable. Again, I won't give specific dimensions here, but if you want to go download that file, I will link that video below. Next, I brought in my sheet of vellum and I'm going to cut the CS1 and the CS2 pieces from that. I just cut until I have three pieces of the CS1 and then for the CS2 I'm actually not going to cut it to the size on the diagram because my sentiment is larger than that. So I end up cutting these pieces to four inches wide by two and a quarter inches tall to fit that sentiment. Once all of the pieces are cut, I then assemble them into kind of what I call little card kits. I just grab the pieces for each one of the cards, so later when I'm ready to assemble, these are all ready to go. 
Now I'm going to stamp my sentiments. I did go ahead and pull out my Misty for this just so I don't try to stamp it by hand and then my hand slips. Sometimes this happens when you're stamping on vellum. So I place the vellum in the lower right hand corner and I'm going to place the sentiment on there making sure that I keep it above the three quarter inch mark on the bottom of this because that's how tall the little strip is that I will put on there later. Once I have the stamp in place, I pick it up with the door of my Misty. Now before I could actually stamp onto the vellum, I do bring in my embossing buddy. It's just a little bag of powder and it helps to make sure that my embossing powder only sticks to where I want it to. Now you'll see here also, this is a new stamp. So before I ink it up, I run my fingers over it and I think this just helps remove any oils from the production. Once I have that stamped, I bring in my tidy tray and my white embossing powder and I dump the powder over my piece of vellum. Then I just gently tap the excess off and set that to the side. I am going to go ahead and stamp and add the embossing powder to all these before I bring in my heat tool. To prevent as much warping as possible of the vellum while I heat it, I did let my heat tool warm up for 30 seconds off camera. That way when I bring it to the vellum, it does melt the powder pretty quickly. Now you will see there that it did warp or wrinkle a little bit when I heat set these. So what I did is I took a tip from Kathy Zilski and I just brought in a thick book I had and I put these in the center of it and set it underneath my laptop for probably five minutes. Now it turned out pretty well flattened, but I think if I would have let it sit longer, they would have turned out better. But this was a great tip from Kathy. Now we can start getting the cards put together. I did go ahead and make two more card bases off camera. And the first thing I'm gonna do is mat my pattern paper, the skinny strip with that strip of vellum. This then gets put onto piece A or that background pattern paper. And I leave about a quarter of an inch on the left. Now, when I went to put this on the card front, with my vellum, I realized that my vellum sediment was probably too big to orient it like it is on the sheet load of card sketch. So I am actually going to do this a landscape version of that. One of the great things is about sheet load is you can turn it and make it work for you. To hide as much of the adhesive as possible on this piece of vellum, I brought in my art glitter glue bottle and it has this fantastic fine tip. And I just went in and put a little bit of adhesive behind some of the wider areas of the birthday word. Then I added more glue on the strip at the bottom because that will not be seen at all. Then I placed that where I wanted it on the card front and I set it underneath the stamp block to the side. I continued this same process for the remaining two cards and I let these sit underneath that stamp block for about five minutes. I just set a timer and I cleaned up a little bit of the mess that I had already made here making these cards. Once that adhesive was dry, I could have stopped with the cards, but you know me and my motto, no card is finished until there's some bling. So I brought in three colors of gems from my stash and I placed those around the sentiment. The first one I placed for the dot of the eye and birthday and the other two just went around there. Depending on the colors of the pattern paper behind the sentiment, I did switch up the placement of my gems. And here's a close up look at the finished cards. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made today's cards and how I was inspired by Sin. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Now don't forget to go visit the Stampin' Munchkins channel and see how I inspired her. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video.
I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.